Hey friend, hi there, welcome. Welcome, uh, this is day number 10 of our 21 day devotional series called Abide. And I'm so glad that you're with me today. I have a very special guest I'm going to introduce and, and let him share in just a moment. Um, Pastor Bjorn Peterson is the servant leader of an international ministry called Prayer Watch International. And there's prayer centers around the world. Uh, he's written over a hundred courses in prayer. And he's just a humble servant of the Lord, but a mighty, mighty intercessor. And uh, it's a joy to have him with me today and also uh, just be a special person in my life personally. And so as we had a conversation over Zoom to record one day, um, it came very apparent to me very quickly that we have some wonderful content for not just one day, but for two days. So in just a moment, we're gonna go to day one, and then we'll have a second day tomorrow, day 11, we'll also be with Pastor Bjorn. And so without any further ado, uh, yeah, let's abide in the Lord as we go to Pastor Bjorn Peterson. Bjorn, it's wonderful to see you, and welcome to our Abide series, and uh, we want to greet you from Lighthouse Church and from Minnesota. We greet you today. Thank you. It's uh, always good to be in touch with Minnesota. Uh, we refer to Minnesota as God's country, and so you can't go wrong with that. And we have so many wonderful memories from Lighthouse, but God has done through the years, and we share some wonderful experiences with you on our team. You've been on team with Prayer Watch International in a number of places, both here and overseas. So thank God for you and for the Lighthouse and the, the good friends and partners there uh, at the Lighthouse Church. Um, maybe we could begin, if you would share with us, uh, you had a wonderful call of God, a vision that he gave you back in 1986, and uh, it's about the body of Christ, and I would love for you to share that vision as we begin today. I'll be happy to. It, that really is the beginning point of Prayer Watch International, the vision that God gave on Sunday, April 27, 1986, and of course it was in Minnesota. Praise uh, the Lord. It happened in Alexandria and Osakis. The vision itself occurred in Alexandria, Minnesota. So uh, it was, uh, I was out called to uh, do some sharing on Sunday morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, when I was driving from Alex over to the town of Osakis, where I had been invited to share, uh, uh, something happened to me that had never happened before, and I, I just started to weep, uh, and weep uncontrollably. Uh, there wasn't anything particularly difficult or challenging going on in my life at the time, uh, but weeping I did, and I, I couldn't stop it. So it wasn't uh, my doing. It was obviously a sovereign move on the part of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and uh, his presence overwhelmed me with the manifestation of weeping and crying. And I remember driving towards Osakis to make the presentation on Sunday morning in the church that uh, I, I, I kind of blurted out and said, Lord, if you want me to speak this morning, you know, I can't be crying. I can't just come into the church and stand in front of the congregation and, and just weep. <clears throat> and as I was driving into town, I got to the sign that said Osakis. And the minute that uh, I drove past that sign, the weeping stopped. And I went into the church uh, and I shared the message. Uh, and the people were very supportive and receptive. Uh, and after the worship service, I left. And as soon as I got back out to that sign, <laughs> I started to weep again, driving back to Alexandria. And I thought, well, maybe I should just drive down to the, my office uh, at the bank uh, because that was closer to uh, to, to uh, Osakis than my home out in the lake. So I uh, drove to the office and I sat down 
at my desk and I wept and wept and uh, and finally myself uh, on my face down on the floor weeping and I wept for uh, maybe two to three hours and at the end of that period then uh, the Lord gave me a clear vision that was uh, and my eyes were open I was not dreaming or anything I could see it uh, literally physically in a hue uh, on the wall uh, in that office and what I saw was uh, a picture from the back of a church uh, towards the altar kind of down the central aisle uh, and uh, it was a congregation that was filled with people or nearly full of people uh, and uh, uh, I stood back there and kind of looked around and uh, looked down towards the altar and uh, I noticed that uh, the, the, the attitude there was kind of somber and serious <clears throat> and uh, as I was looking around uh, I noticed that there was a, a couple getting married so it was a wedding service uh, and this couple, they were moving down the aisle towards the altar for the wedding celebration. Uh, and as I looked closer at the couple, I noticed that, you know, the groom was healthy and vibrant and strong and good looking, but the bride was sickly. And she was, in fact, very sick. In fact, she was so sick that they were carrying her in on a stretcher. And I thought, no, this is not right. This is not the way it's supposed to be for a wedding, which is a happy and healthy uh, occasion, not uh, a sad and a difficult occasion, such as being carried in on a stretcher. Uh, and they got to the front of the church and there they stopped. And, and the congregation were looking around and kind of looking at each other they wonder what to do, you know, how to handle this situation, this unusual wedding situation. And as I was watching, and as I was thinking, something has to be done, but, you know, what needs to take place here? Uh, and then all of a sudden, there was a person who got up from uh, the seat and walked over to the stretcher. This person knelt down by the stretcher, put their hands on the arm of the bride, and started to pray. Started to pray for her healing and restoration. And as she did that, then somebody else came and knelt right next to this first person and started to pray likewise. And then a third person and the fourth person, and pretty soon the whole stretcher was surrounded by people on their knees praying for healing and restoration of the bride. And as I was watching, I noticed that the bride was changing. There was a metamorphosis taking place, that her ash gray color in her face began to change to a more natural uh, more of a beautiful color. Uh, and the next thing I noticed was that her eyes, <clears throat> which had been closed through this whole period, opened up. And she was beginning to look around. And then more people joining now, second rows and third rows around uh, the stretcher, praying and continuing to pray for her healing and restoration. Next thing I noticed is that she lifted up her head and was looking around. And then with a little bit of help, she sat up, still more people praying. And then the next thing that she swung one of her legs off of the stretcher. And with a little help, she swung both legs off of the stretcher. Uh, and she stood up slowly to begin with, but it seemed like with every motion, she just got stronger and stronger. Finally, she was able to stand upright on her own without any help. Yes. And then <clears throat> she started to walk around. She walked back down the aisle and around the church. And with every step, she just seemed to be stronger and healthier. And, 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 and at the end, full restoration. 
They took the stretcher, walked it out the back, and she came back and stood right next to the groom. And the two of them uh, then proceeded up to the altar uh, to the wedding ceremony. So the bride went through a tremendous metamorphosis. Amen. And it changed from being gravely sick to being completely healed and restored. And <clears throat> when we look at that vision, uh, you know, I'm always asking, you know, what does it mean? What is the vision saying? Number one. And number two, to whom is the vision given? Uh, you know, was it just for my edification or uh, for my family or for my church or was it for anybody else? And as we have prayed and sought the Holy Spirit for guidance, uh, I believe it is really a vision for the entire body of Christ, the ecclesia, yes. uh, the whole church worldwide. And what God is saying, there are really uh, three messages that comes out from that vision. Number one, it is a call to prayer. Obviously, the main action here uh, was that people joined and prayed for the bride, and the bride got healed. And so God, throughout the entire world, is uh, calling his people to prayer. Yes. Uh, and I remember pre uh, teaching 500 pastors in India one time and shared the vision. One of the pastors jumped up at the conclusion and they said, God is speaking and he's telling us to be more involved in prayer. Amen. And you know, he, he's right, he was right. Uh, God is calling his people to prayer. He always has, you know, he's never stopped uh, extolling the importance and the priority of prayer. Uh, and the second has to do with wholeness. It's a call to wholeness. Uh, and we know that the bride was sick but she was healed. And today there is so much uh, infirmity, so much sickness, so much bondage, uh, so many challenges and difficulties, you know, here and around the entire world. And God is calling his church, his body, to pray for healing for it, for the ecclesia, the church, but also for others, people who are sick, and infirm that they can receive that special touch of the Holy Spirit and yes. be restored and be healed and set free uh, from the things that are limiting and hindering it from fulfilling all of God's redemptive plans and purposes. And the third uh, message I believe in this vision is uh, get ready for the return of the groom. Jesus yes. is coming back again. Yes. And, you know, he is not. Uh, it's not going to be very long before his return. It is an imminent return. Uh, and the bride needs to be ready. You know, what, what does the bride need to do in order to be prepared for the return of the groom? Uh, and so these are the three points that I think the Lord is communicating to the body of Christ around the world. Become intentional about prayer with all of what that embraces. Uh, Pray for deliverance, healing, and restoration with all of what that entails. Uh, and then prepare for the return of the groom. Uh, making sure that the harvest is brought in. Making sure that the lamps are full of oil. Uh, and then that we are watching and praying. Watching and praying. Yes. Watching and praying for the return of the, the, the groom so that we are ready when he comes. Amen. I, so I, that motivates that motivates PWI, and uh, you know, I thought uh, we need to remind each other, you know, as members of Christ's body, of the priority of prayer. Uh, and one of the passages that we often share is First Timothy chapter two, verses one through four, where Paul is sharing with his colleague Timothy. He says, I urge, it's not just I suggest or I recommend or you should consider, but I urge with all of the anointing of the apostolic office in which I stand, 
this is what I urge you to do, Timothy, and those you share the gospel with. I urge that first of all, not second, not third, not when we get into trouble, although God is there for all of those too, but first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all. So it's not just for a few, for us and our families, even though that's important, uh, but it is for all, for kings and those in authority. Uh, you know, this is important that we especially remember those in leadership, uh, whether it be the leadership in our families or in our churches, in our communities, in our state, in our nation, in the world, uh, whether it be, you know, uh, industrial leadership, uh, whether it be political leadership or ecclesiastical leadership, uh, that we are to in a special way remember those uh, who are given authority. Uh, and then the promise that goes along with that, that we will live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. We can surely use some more of that today. Uh, yes. uh, because it displeases God our Savior who wants all men, women, and children to be saved and come to a knowledge of the, the truth. So here we have the priority, the priority of prayer. Oh, wasn't that a wonderful conversation? I hope that your spirit is encouraged. What a vision the Lord gave him. And we are called to abide in prayer, to abide in, in praying for the body of Christ to be strengthened. And so let's close today uh, praying according to that. And then I want to invite you back tomorrow for uh, another wonderful sharing from Pastor Bjorn. So. Let's close today with prayer. Father, we just thank you for this encouragement, this vision that is still coming to pass of you calling your beloved sons and daughters to being prayerful, being mindful, and lifting up for the health and wholeness of the body of Christ, that the bride of Christ would be strengthened. And so even today, right now, Lord, we pause, and Lord, we pray that you'll bring um, those in leadership of churches or ministries, uh, Lord, those that are uh, in the body of Christ that need to be lifted up today in prayer, that the body of Christ would be made whole and would be made strong, would be made healthy, uh, being prepared for the return of the groom. And Lord, as Pastor Bjorn talked, we also want to pray for leaders. We want to pray for all believers. We want to pray, Father, that Holy Spirit, there'd be a fresh baptism of your spirit that would come upon the body of Christ, an awakening. Wake up those that are slumbering, Lord, and cause them to be alert and, and, and awake and alive in the things of God. Father, we just thank you for meeting with us here and now. May you be glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, until tomorrow, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. And remember, my name's Bill. And I'm your friend.